Okay, the purpose of this video is to illustrate um, some of the things that can happen to your waveform parameters when you're using feedback to control a system. So we'll begin with a short review of waveform parameters. And I've created this really beautiful um, drawing here uh, just to make it clear it isn't already. This red line is the waveform. So we'll sort of highlight it a little bit. And there are several parameters associated with it. One is rise time. So this is the time that it takes to go from 10% to 90% of the desired value. Overshoot is how far above the desired value you go. Uh, settling time is how long it takes the waveform to rise and then settle down in some steady state or close to some steady state value and steady state error is the difference between your desired value and the steady state value. So um, that's just a reminder of the definitions that we're going to use. So we'll illustrate how this works by choosing a, a uh, simple transfer function so the transfer function will be this one. H of S is 1 over S plus 1 times S plus 10. So this represents a system where you might have, uh, say for example, a motor and the current it takes some time for the current to uh, start up in the motor and once the current starts flowing through the motor that applies a torque to a load and it also takes some time for the load to accelerate. So that's one potential uh, way to look at um, this uh, function. I've chosen it mostly because it gives me the answers I want but it does have some bearing on reality. So I can multiply these two terms together and I get this for the transfer function. What I want to do is put this transfer function, this plant, into a control system and for this example we're going to use a simple gain controller because uh, that illustrates what we want to illustrate. And anything more complicated, it becomes very complicated to do the analysis and figure out what's going on. So the gain controller takes the error and multiplies it by a gain k, and that goes then through our plant the output of the plant is fed back to this point and is used to compute the error. So x here is my desired value, y is the actual value that I get um, from the plant and uh, um, the value that's multiplied by the gain this is the error, and then this is the input to the plant. So the transfer function of the control system looks like this. Hopefully you'll remember that it looks like k times the transfer function of the plant. over 1 plus k times the transfer function of the plant. And if I now multiply top and bottom by the polynomial that I have here in the denominator, this becomes k over 
s squared plus 11s plus 10 plus k. Okay, so that is the overall transfer function between the desired value x and the output of the plant. So we want to find the steady state error and the rise time and all of these other things in response to a unit step function. That's typically how we evaluate whether our system is doing what we want it to do. As we put a unit step function in, we look at rise time, steady state error, and such. So that means that the output of the system will be k over s, that's the 1 over s corresponding to the unit step function, times s squared plus 11s plus 10 plus k. So these are the, uh, or this is the output, and we now want to look at the time function that this represents and determine, uh, again, things like steady state error and so forth. Before we actually take an inverse Laplace transform, though, uh, there's one thing that we can compute analytically, and this introduces the final value theorem, which is a useful thing to know. So that's why we'll do it this way. The final value theorem says that the limit as t approaches infinity, so this is the value of a signal y of t after a long, long time, is given by the limit as s approaches 0 of s times y of s. So this allows us to find out the steady state value of our time function from its Laplace transform, which is a handy thing to be able to do. If we plug in the expression we have for y of s, this will be the limit as s approaches 0 of s times y of s, which is k over s times s squared plus 11s plus 10 plus k. And these two s's cancel, and so now I need to take the limit as s goes to 0. It turns out that limit is actually quite easy to take. This s goes to 0 as s goes to 0. This s goes to 0 as s goes to 0. And we are left with just k over 10 plus k. So again, this is the steady state response of the system to a unit step function after time has uh, gotten very big. You'll remember that we put in u of t, so our desired output value was 1. You will notice that this output value will always be less than 1. I have k over k plus 10, so in this case the denominator is always going to be larger than the numerator, so my steady state value will always be less than 1. As k gets big, the steady state value approaches 1, but it will never actually reach 1. So that's the way to determine the steady state error. In this case, the steady state error is 1 minus the steady state value. And after some math, you find that this is 10 over 10 plus k. So for example, if I use a value of k equal 10, so I take my error and multiply by 10, my steady state value 
or my steady state error will be 1 half. If I use a value of k equal to 30, then my steady state value error will be 1 fourth. k equal to 200, if I really want to get that steady state error small, then my steady state error will be 0.05, 1 over 20. So that's how it affects steady state error. How does k affect other uh, parameters that we're interested in, rise time, settling time, uh, overshoot, and so on? It looks like I'm running out of time, so rather than tell you now, I'll end this video and begin part two.